let's look at a really broad overview of how you go about designing a questionnaire, a survey to collect data to test a hypothesis in organizational psychology or in any other domain where you're going to be using surveys to collect data. Now, the first step, and this is by far the hardest, is figuring out what should be asked. The problem statement and the hypotheses need to be clear. This is typically at least a third of the work in a study, is figuring out exactly what uh, you want. And so by clarifying your hypotheses, you're learning, you're figuring out what are the relevant variables, the, ver the relevant constructs that uh, you need to, to measure. So you need to understand the variables. You need to understand the constructs to uh, um, make a, a decent hy hypothesis. Now, you're not going to start writing the questionnaire until it is extremely clear what you're looking for, to until it's, it's extremely clear what your hypothesis is or your hypotheses are, because you want to make sure that you have what you need to measure your hypotheses, but you don't want to get anything else because it just gets so complicated so quickly that if you start thinking about all the different things that would be interesting to measure, you just end up with a hodgepodge of, of nothing that you'll never analyze anyway because it gets too complicated. But if you have a clearly formulated hypothesis, you will be able to uh, analyze it. Okay, so once you know exactly what you need to measure, what the constructs are you're going to measure, what variables you're going to get data for, um, you can think about how the questions uh, should be uh, phrased. Now, the questions and the measures that you use must be relevant. Like I, I said, they should only seek the information needed, and they, uh, they need to be super clear to provide accurate information concerning what you're trying to, to measure. And the main way of doing this, if possible, is to use pre-existing measures that have been shown to be psychometrically uh, valid. So for example, if you're going to uh, measure organizational commitment, well, almost everybody uses Allen and Myers scales for organizational commitment because they work really well. They measure three different sub-dimensions of organizational commitment, and people know what uh, what you're talking about when you use their theoretical framework and their uh, uh, measures. So generally, you don't want to create recreate the wheel because you don't know that the questions that you create will actually measure what you want it to be measuring. That's what psychometrically valid means, that they're measuring the right things in the right way. So you can, to, to figure out what you're going to ask, if you can, you want to get pre-existing scales of um, each of the variables, if possible. You might have to make up your own scale for each uh, variable. By scale, I mean a set of questions. But generally, you want to use pre-existing ones, if possible. Then you have to think about, in what sequence should the items be arranged? And, uh, um, uh, because the earlier items can influence responses to later items. For example, if I wanted to measure the quality of uh, uh, one's romantic life and satisfaction in life, so look at the quality of relation, romantic relationships somebody has, see if that's correlated with how satisfied they are in life. Now, if I start off with the specific topic of, hey, how's your love life? Um, and if somebody's uh, not doing very well, is alone, uh, is looking for a, a partner, and, oh man, yeah, it's really lame, 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 lame. And then when they the next section, and they're thinking about how life, how lame life is. Uh, how satisfied are you with life? I'm not very satisfied at all. We'd get a real strong correlation. However, if we started off with life satisfaction questions. Um, before talking about relationships, somebody might be perfectly happy in life, and you may um, 
we ask questions about life satisfaction and they, they have a fairly high score. And then afterwards we ask specifically about their romantic relationships and they say, oh, well, yeah, that part of life is, is really lame. And so they give real low score to uh, um, life satisfaction or to romantic relationships, but a high score to um, life satisfaction, we would find a weaker correlation between the two variables when we compose everybody's ver uh, data. So general, the general rule of thumb is ask the more general things first and then the more specific questions at the end. And that way it won't make salient. It won't make one specific area of life or work stand out that will influence the more general uh, uh, aspect. Um, and that's also why one of the reasons that we uh, ask demographic questions at the end. We don't want to make demographics salient, usually. We want to find out what, how people think and feel and what's going on inside their head, not what uh, they think and feel when somebody points out what their gender or race or age is. We don't want those things to be salient. We just want their normal life experience to be uh, uh, salient. So we put the demographic questions at the at the end. And then the, the fourth uh, uh, step here is what questionnaire design and layout will best serve the research objectives? What form are you going to uh, do this? What type of survey items will you use? Are you going to use fill in the blank questions? Are you going to use multiple choice? How are you going to lay them out on the page? Um, will it be administered in person, on paper? or online. Now, almost all surveys uh, are, are done online in academic settings, but paper surveys can be, be really good because a lot of times people will think that uh, uh, paper surveys that they physically put into a box are less traceable than online surveys, and they might be very right. So paper uh, surveys could be very useful. Now, in-person surveys could be useful when you need to go get a random sample, and so you stand out where a lot of people are walking, and you ask people, hey, can I uh, get, uh, get your opinion on this? That's done less and less because people tend to be less cooperative. Um, so it's generally a choice between paper and online. And when, when we put things together, when we structure things, when we give people instructions, we need to make sure that all ambiguities are avoided and it is just crystal clear so they know exactly what they're supposed to do for uh, all the way throughout the survey. And then once you get it all together, how should the questionnaire be pre-tested? Um, the, and this, this pretest is a, uh, an important part of the survey design because other people are going to see issues that you forget to see. So you should always pretest the, the survey someplace, and um, uh, people should um, uh, give you feedback on what it is. Were they confused about anything? Is anything not clear? Are there typos? Things like that. And then you should go back and revise the questionnaire based on the feedback that you get from the uh, the, the pretest. 